Well, my computer keeps crashing. I guess it's getting too hot. I've never tried to make a video when it's this hot. Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to get through this. Um, hi, Rosemary. I'm gonna. I I was looking for a video that I made, uh, but they're too long and and drawn out and complicated. Where I, I lose people along the way. I can tell after I watch them. Um, so I guess this is good practice to try um, and see if I can say the same thing uh, m much more quickly. Uh, I'm going to try to pause, see if it crashes again because my video camera is not working right. Okay, it's working so far. Um, okay, right. So the first thing I, sh I should need to explain is that at some point in this explanation, the subject matter, one runs into the question, if we were created by conscious intelligence or a God, God in heaven, um, which is kind of the same, but I don't want to get into that. Uh, you know, the, the need to believe that there's something out there. Is it God as in scripture in the books? Uh, if you look at our, our modern civilization, you'll see that it's the same need although we don't seem to relate the books to uh, New Age people who believe in aliens or what have you. Or um, that question unanswered, meaning that um, there is no awareness or, or there is no creator, no existence of creator until others we simply don't know. So the, those two basically are is a question that continues on, and at some point we might want to answer that question for what I want to explain to make more sense. Um, but what I want to say first is that it's not important actually to answer that question. It doesn't matter. It's about us. The need for a, a religion to arise around something that would be a deity or aliens. Um, uh, and, and which is the same need that they had 3,000 years ago when they wrote the books, is a condition, is the predicament of mankind. And it's the que it's, that's what we're talking about, right, on the post. And so I'm going to try to explain why and how why that question actually doesn't need to be answered, although it can be answered. Um, um, for, for us to understand why religion arises and why we seem to need to believe in God or something out there. Okay, the first thing we need the first thing we need to understand is mankind's condition on the planet, our existence, the existence that has always been the human existence on this world. And the one thing that we need to understand defines is necessary to see what it does to us is understanding that we are unique in our capacity, our intelligent capacity compared to the rest of the conscious social animals that we share the planet with. All other examples of life, of social life and what life may be compared to us, there's a vast, a vast difference. And that distance, that difference can be measured as a distance, is analogous to say um, what's the most intelligent animal on the planet? The dolphins or whales, right? Or, 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 or um, some kind of simian. And us is pretty much the fact that we can, we're already developing sciences for arriving to other stars and are delving into the, into the unseen micro, micro, micro world and, and all the things that we do. And these other animals, even the most intelligent of them possibly don't understand what is out there in the universe or why they catch diseases, right? So if you could measure that vast difference, uh, is, the, is, is, is a segment that will explain what happens to us in our self-awareness. And in parentheses, yes, we could question how intelligent are we actually that we kill our own offspring, our own children in wars, but that's another, that's another question. The fact is that there's enormous distance that we bear, that we're aware of, that is part of uh, our existence, 
of our condition, uh, our living predicament on this world. Okay, that said, another thing to work into the calcul the reasoning uh, is that our mind is not, in a sense, we're one being, we're one integral mind, one integral brain, but to understand a polarity that happens to us, we can speak of two types of intelligence. One is more intuitive and natural, which is actually the more grounded one that has us uh, closest to animals. In other words, we will pick up something to cover ourselves, just like an animal might look for a palm frond and, and get it and cover itself from the cold. Right, so we, we have the same intuitive um, body needs that are part of our mind, but different to animals, we look at what we can do. Our capacity will invent synthetics, will create a heating system for a house, will uh, knit f complex fabrics, and so that's again that distance I was talking about. This vast intelligence that we have that has the same aim, the same purpose of taking care of this being, just like we would also pick up a palm frond if we couldn't, if we didn't have a sweater and we needed to protect ourselves from the cold, is part of, an integral part of our, is who we are, our, our thinking mind, our thinking intelligence. I'm going to keep pausing because I think that's the way to keep the computer cool. Okay, so we, we have these two spheres, these two areas of our intelligence. One is way out there. It is super capable. It does amazing, incredible scientific things, but it is not so grounded. It actually, though it sets off in our own, in its own best interest, in our own best interest, it is not grounded like that which is our more natural intuitive intelligence. Um, these two coexist, but as one, but they have a relationship. They affect each other. They're like two spheres of our intelligence that have uh, a, 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 an angry conversation, a, an argument, and they're happening in our single being. We can't separate them. Now, in literature, you might find that you know this is referred to in different ways. But what is important is to understand what happens because of this. So while our basic ground-based intuitive intelligence is very close to our actual real needs, so therefore, for example, if it gets angry about how government is treating our children, it possibly is correct. It's, not, uh, it's probably not out there imagining something completely crazy. But the other intelligence, our other sphere, will try to develop a vaccine, for example, and try new sciences. And we, what we find, as is also found in literature, that one thing that we can always count on is that it will trip, it will, it will backfire, it will mistake, it will err. It will. It is condemned to err because it is a very, very capable, ambitious. Uh, intelligence that is yes trying to do good to try to serve its its its, uh, its body us but it has a capacity that seems to be um, and this is why I was saying we're gonna get to that question eventually you could look at the world and look at how crazy how we kill our own offspring our own children with the invention of weapons and we uh, insist on eating certain things or putting some things in the environment or continuing to drive vehicles that run children over or run each other over you know and yet it continues to forge forward and you might think well, it's very capable we may get to Mars but it doesn't seem like it is really aware of what we need for our optimal protective well-being and this is our condition this is basically something that we cannot change. This is the being that we are. We have an amazing capacity that because it's so capable, it's like a tower 
that went beyond the structural capacities of its of its column and will topple over. There's just we just keep building this tower that will topple over. But we're also the intelligence that knows that it will topple over, that that feels a gut feeling that we're raising that tower too high and that perhaps nobody really wants to live on on, 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 on the a hundred and fifteenth story. Uh, we rather see each other at, at ground level. And so these two intelligences coexist and have a relationship between them. And like I said, we actually want them. And this is where theology kind of comes in. I, I keep wanting to introduce where theology might fit in. You could deduce this seems to be intentional because a creator might be delighted to see that uh, to give us something that will make us capable of not suffering any of the stuff animals suffer and just build this amazing world if we get it right if we stop building that tower that topples over or stop poisoning our own bodies and killing our children um, but there is where freedom of will and the pleasure of a creator to maybe not even be sure if we're how long it's going to take us to get it together you know that you know and so there's a there's a part that kind of goes into scripture the 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 delight of god's creation and how his pleasure is to see us see our free will and which also has makes sense scientifically because we could only feel free if we're free to fail, correct? If we're and so this unstable, unchangeable predicament of of walking around with something that could hurt us, and we can't seem to cover up those the, that 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 sharpness of of that knife, and we have to do everything with it in our hand, <laughs> um, is either can be our salvation from and, and we could design a world that's just amazing that we hardly suffer at all and, and 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 die blissfully perhaps or satisfied or what have you without any pain and you know and all this what sciences could do for our existence or we continue to do the world as as we always have which is failing with this capacity and hurting ourselves and killing each other right okay so the point the point is made so now you got to stand as the human being who's more sensible and more correct ultimately is always his natural grounded intelligence which does not want to kill his own children correct and he sees his predicament he sees what others do and he sees what himself did what herself did also you know what we I set out to do this and I ended up killing my neighbor's children or or giving my daughter something that ended up being toxic right and so this part of our brain the one that doesn't have an instability the one that knows ultimately what we want to be healthy says wait a second this doesn't make any sense how can something we don't see animals do it how come we do this? Why is it that we do this? Why do we keep, um, you know, failing in our in our scientific prowess and our in our logical intelligence of creating governments and vaccines? We keep going around, going all the way around, and boom, and hurting ourselves, failing. Does not make sense. There is a question that arises in our mind that is the result of this instability of this constant failure and this is the actual question that uh, provokes us that motivates us to think further this is not right so it's kind of similar to what people say which you know is uh, the unknown the what came after what will come later it's kind of similar but in actuality it's much more tangible it's much more real it's much more living there is something that happens that we just cannot does not make sense cannot make sense and where it is impossible to accept because of nothing in life kills itself hurts itself 
uh, the way we show ourselves to to do in existence. So this question arises, and what happens? We naturally tell ourselves, well, it can't be this way. We have to do something about it. If we're going to invent a vaccine to cure a disease, or if we're going to build a kind of new material for a structure and we don't want it to collapse on our heads we have to have some kind of wisdom that says wait test the material first make sure that we don't try experimenting on our children you know maybe we should experiment with our elders <laughs> you know we start thinking how to handle this unstable predicament this question that should not exist we try to do something about it and this is the 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 launching area of the um of a wisdom literature something that starts trying to amalgamate this instability which will not go away and so we will continue to see look at us walking around with cell phones and not even talking to our children anymore somebody will say well we need to you know have 10 hours a week you know because Gaia green family values uh, say that we need to spend 10 hours every week with our children and it came because we noticed that we're not talking to our children and we spend all our time looking at a cell phone and so the instability causes the uh, the, sur the surgeons of a literature and then stories and so we created stories and, and we grabbed stories that existed and you know it's that's basically it okay so this is what I believe is the actual now um, other things people confuse religion is God no uh, that, that there is a creator as as I explained it can be a separate understanding or a non question if you want if you some people believe there is no God so when they say there is no God no creator uh, they also think that there should be no religion and it is not like that there is a separation there uh, you can believe or not believe in God or creator it doesn't matter the need for some kind of wisdom like I explained before will come about because of the constant the it's not even constant it's a permanent fixed we're wired to be unstable we're wired to be unstable and it has to do with being able to use this intelligence that will also generate uh, intellectuality in that wisdom area uh, you know and so we create philosophies or political philosophies that end up being wrong but they are attempting they are attempting to balance and to and to um, and to reconcile these this instability and and they will prove to be wrong so we continue always we're always continuing to and so um, somehow if we start making it about political philosophy we find that it's very logical about ordering and administrating people in society and so there is always the arisal the arisal the uh, the surgeons the appearance of a literature that has is divested is totally unrelated to political or law or any kind of uh, intellectual uh, literature intellectuality but is purely about values because it it really is trying to not um, it, it, try, it wants to be metaphysical and spiritual and not fail and, and correct this this imbalance this problem of reoccurring failure so the more it is logical um, the more it will it may be wrong but we don't even as a humanity as a civilization we haven't even grasped how how fixed this constant failure is there's a lot of things in what I just explained uh, for you that we're not talking about or we refer to here and there but we haven't put it all together yet and there's something else that I want to share with you as long as I'm, I'm into it but I'm gonna slow down a little bit to, I'm gonna put a pause on to cool down the computer for a second. Another thing, another condition of human existence that plays into this 
Um, and I'm, I'm not, I don't know that I ever tried to tie it in, but it's, it may be, it may be parallel, it might be similar to what I just explained, but it is the relationship of recorded reality and living reality. And we travel with these every day of our lives. We are the, the fusion of a recorded reality, like for example, I will try to explain to you how I feel and then I will refer to something I read or something that I've learned uh, or, or, or something that or an explanation that has to do with why somebody did something to me for whatever reason I think they did and thus why I reacted and it becomes a combination so what recorded reality registered reality is everything that we tell ourselves we have to think so for example, you say, I'm hungry, right? Boop, I just felt hungry. That came from the living reality, which is also the natural sphere that I was talking about, ground-based intelligence. Spontaneous feeling, I'm hungry. But then I've learned, and my mom raised me, that you should only eat at 1 o'clock for lunch, and not before 11 or what have you. And so my being is the expression of what the recorded reality, the customs, the, where the restaurant is, <laughs> where they built the restaurant, where the fridge is, if I went to the market and have anything in the fridge, and the reality of living experience. Um, and what happens is that recorded reality, our inventions, are the things that we write, everything that we've written, we continue to rehash and say, okay, because this was written in 2,000 years ago is absolute wisdom. And of course, how can it be uh, updated to what the living reality of the world is today? It isn't. But we continue to drag all this recorded reality with us. The a refrigerator that's 15 years old and a book that is 2,000 years old. And we put it all here in the living need of our being. And these two also have a relationship that we're not very, very, uh, very savvy, very much in control of. Um, some things are classic, classical knowledge or classical, uh, yeah, classical knowledge, I think it's called, uh, will always be true. There is an intellectuality, there is a category for things that never change that we have written and we discovered. But a lot of things uh, we still believe, but they're not true and we continue to make and forge forward a world that uses those things that many have already proven they hurt us or they were wrong when they written they were written or what have you um, and so this is uh, now it's so you have like f four elements that I, I've shared with you um, the relationship between recorded and so an ideal world would be where every second we are renovating and chucking out the recorded reality that was found to be not perfect or not close enough to the natural world. Um, but we don't do that because we don't have this kind of awareness of our, of our existential condition. But it, it does define what our experience, our living experience is, the relationship between recorded and living reality um, and just to finalize I do believe that we are slowly you know like slowly trying to get it together and um, the ecological movement that, that brought green and uh, self-sustainability and ec ecological sciences is uh, an intellectual attempt by civilization, an intuitive attempt to be approaching the center, which is ultimately our health and our ha and our home, our home environment, and our bodily health could is where everything starts, and it's where our future uh, goes. <laughs> and so, in in some way, we are kind of uh, struggling to. Uh, to get there, but th there is a lot of void right now. Uh, nobody really, people want to dismiss God because they think that books are too old and 
we don't, and we have a hard time telling ourselves we wrote those books. Didn't, God didn't write them. God is not doesn't have a pen. Doesn't need a pen. <laughs> you know, we wrote now. There is in scripture and stuff that could help us this, you know, <laughs> resolve that, which is God inspires. Uh, we, you know, God could be seen as that higher capacity to actually have a, an amazing amazing super super intelligent world that is true to the natural form the ultimate the ultimate capacity that is well centered on, on our naturalness um, and and that could be the closest point that we have to God and therefore it already is within us and it inspires us already because it already is a point that exists unaware uh, that no, we're none of us are aware of uh, that we go over and walk over and past it every day and we don't realize that it, 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 there is a balance point a center of gravity that exists in us um, so there may be you know it is also true that God in inspired us to write things but perhaps what it inspired us to write is stuff that we have to revise and clean out and reinterpret um, because we have always interpreted it wrongly. Um, I think I'm, I'm going off a little bit too much here. And I'm taking too long. I did make it shorter than the usual video. <laughs> like I'm amazed that the computer didn't go off either. So I'm, I'm, I hope this, let me know if, if how clear I am because I'm really bad at, um, uh, at dissertating. Uh, I, I don't know how to conclude things and I, Anyways, so let me know if you got anything from this and what you thought, okay? Nice to meet you, and um, I don't know what to say. Aloha, aloha. <laughs>